Over 25 years ago, Ridge Racer was released in the arcades, then a year later it was released in the home in the form of a PlayStation port. Ridge Racer quickly received critical acclaim, praise on almost all four fronts, graphics, sound, gameplay, etc. You may have watched a video by Digital Foundry telling you all about Daytona USA and how its graphical fidelity and smooth gameplay was nearly unrivaled by anything on console, but I'm here to tell you that Ridge Racer was a competitor of Daytona USA. Coming out both in the arcades and on console at nearly the same time, Ridge Racer was quite the competitor. While not quite outdoing Daytona USA, it was most definitely comparable in almost every way. Silky smooth 60 FPS, pretty high quality textures and models for the time, and fun gameplay. Taking a look at the console version, Ridge Racer completely blows Daytona USA out of the water without a doubt. The console port of Ridge Racer is better in almost every single way possible to Daytona USA's console port. Well, of course the game couldn't match the exact frame rate and graphical fidelity as an arcade machine. Its graphical fidelity remains almost identical to the arcade version, aside from some slight downgrades, of course. It does this whilst also having little pop-in and attaining a smooth 30 frames per second, compared to Daytona USA's 20 frames per second in the Sega Saturn port. One of the things that Ridge Racer nailed as well is the soundtrack. Ridge Racer's soundtrack is perfect for what it is, an incredibly arcadey racing game. It features a techno soundtrack, which remains consistently great for sliding around racetracks. This was the first in the lineup of Hiroshi Okubo, Shinji Hasoe, Nobuyoshi Sano, and Ayako's work on the Ridge Racer series, many of whom would end up composing music for many of Namco's other titles. Okubo himself believed that, quote-unquote, techno would give a feeling of energy, journey, and speed, and commented that the genre was chosen because it embodied the game's unrealistic speed and tension. Well, back in the day, Ridge Racer might have been a masterpiece, a marvel of technology even. Does it still hold up today? I would say that graphically, the game still holds the same charm as Daytona USA, with the low poly counts and the bright colors, but the game is certainly lacking in a few areas. For starters, there's only really one racetrack, with varying skill levels, which only add in small differences to the same track to make it somewhat harder. There's only four different vehicles to choose from, and the handling for all four of them feels really clunky. The game also has a drifting mechanic, which I must say I absolutely adore. Watching cars just go fucking sideways is endlessly entertaining, but the drifting mechanic itself is very clunky. The cars often just slide around, making it feel more like spinning out than drifting. With all that said, Ridge Racer is a great game, but I don't think the gameplay-wise it holds up. That isn't a bad thing, but what is up next starts to feel progressively worse. Ridge Racer Revolution would be more fittingly named Ridge Racer Expansion. The game itself is only a slight improvement off of Ridge Racer. The car models feel slightly more detailed and the track is different. Aside from that, there's only a few more relatively unimportant additions. Though one thing the developers didn't fail to deliver was more amazing music by the same talented composers. Rage Racer, technically Ridge Racer 3, strikes close but just barely misses the mark. While the game succeeds greatly and not just being an expansion of the previous games, it remains fairly clunky alongside its predecessors. The game does introduce some new things that are welcome additions though, like being able to customize your car by tuning it and making decals for it. The game also introduces a Grand Prix mode, which gives more of a feeling of structure to the races, some sort of context, though even with the Grand Prix mode, the game is nowhere near interesting or fun enough. As I said before, the game remains pretty clunky. The drifting mechanic for one has changed up a little bit. While cars no longer feel as if they're spinning out, a new problem is introduced and in that as soon as you exit the drift, your car's trajectory doesn't correct itself, and instead just continues going whichever way the car is pointing at the time of exiting the drift. This leads to often hitting walls, which causes a dramatic loss in speed. Another problem is that the one track in the game has fairly tight roads. This is a big problem because there's an invisible wall at each side of the road at the exact point the pavement ends. This means that the moment your car comes even close to anything different from pavement, your car just instantly bumps off and loses a great deal of speed. This makes it incredibly difficult to keep up with the opponents and leads to much frustration. Once again, the talented composers of the previous game provide an undeniably good soundtrack. Though this time even better than the previous games, the music has switched from sounding like a bunch of Yamaha keyboards stacked on top of each other to actual music. The game also provides a music player, which means you can actually hear the songs present in the game before you start racing. My personal favorite is Silver Stream. By now, even in the media, the Ridge Racer series was starting to appear more and more mediocre, seeing as how reviewers at the time were more critical of the game. Honestly, with the first three games being so mediocre, I have to wonder how this series got eight games in the main lineup, and quite a few handheld or mobile games. Wait a minute. Do you guys hear something? Oh, 
Holy shit. The moment I booted up the game and saw the intro, I could tell this game was going to be better than anything in the series up to that point, and I was proven right. While at first the game's handling was still a little bit hard to get the hang of, when I finally mastered the game's drift mechanic, I felt like a god. At any moment, I could just tap the X button and the car would just instantly slide around the corner without bleeding off any speed or hitting walls. The game has almost a technique to its drifting mechanic. First, you let off the X button for about a second, then the moment your car gets anywhere close to a wall, you press the X button again. And if after that you need to correct your car's trajectory, you just let off the X button again and steer your car back into correct position. This makes for an incredibly fun arcade racer like no other. Finally, the Ridge Racer series masters its drift mechanic. Type 4 also pushes the PlayStation 1's hardware to the limits. This game makes Rage Racer look like Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. There are other things in this game as well. The Grand Prix mode has... a story to it. That statement alone probably instantly brings confusion and intrigue. In almost all racing games that have tried having some sort of story, it's always ended up being mediocre at the very best. Games like The Crew and Midnight Club Los Angeles. So, how does the story hold up? Well, there's four different racing clubs. I personally chose Pack Racing Club because their cars struck me as the nicest looking. The game takes on an almost Ace Combat 3 style approach to its story, having character dialogue taking place through video calls with specific characters. The only character that you'll talk with is the race chief of your team, and each team has its own unique race chief. Pack Racing Club's chief is Shinji Yazaki, and holy shit, this guy is an absolute bro. He has many dialogue trees specific to how well you perform in each race. The guy even has character development. He goes from, at the beginning, criticizing you and calling you a rookie, but at the end, he begins to praise you and feel happy when you come in first place, making Shinji Yazaki possibly gaming's first... tsundere. By far, I've never played a racing game where coming in first place is so gratifying. Shinji's reaction to you winning a race just makes me genuinely happy, and when I only finish in second place, Shinji is welcoming, though still critical of you, making you want to go for that first place finish even more. Hell, Shinji even has branching dialogue specific to how many tries it took you to come in first place. Later on in the Grand Prix, it's revealed that Shinji has a tragic past with racing. In a prior race, long before when Type 4 takes place, Shinji ended up secondhand causing an accident that killed one of his best friends. It's revealed near the end just how beat up Shinji is about it, how he made that friend a promise that his team would win a Grand Prix, and how grateful he is that you won the Grand Prix. Holy shit, this is the only racing game that I've ever played that has given me feels. And it's probably one of the only racing games I can actually say has a decent story. With that, Ridge Racer Type 4's Grand Prix mode comes to an end, though there are three other racing teams, each with their own stories and dialogue. Though the races remain the same, aside from using different cars. Of course, I couldn't just not mention one of the main things that Ridge Racer Type 4 is remembered for. You know how each game prior to Type 4 had a great soundtrack? Well, Type 4 managed to even blow those out of the water with some of the best music of the series. My personal favorite song is Pearl Blue Soul, which has a smooth vibe to it. Another favorite is Eat'em Up. You wouldn't expect much from a simple remix of the Pac-Man theme, but damn, is it not energetic and upbeat. While Type 4 might not have an extensive amount of content, compared to the previous game, sometimes only having one track and three or four cars to choose from, Type 4 is a gigantic leap forward for Namco. I would say that Type 4 is the one game so far to have truly stood up to today's standards, and the content that is there is amazing. After Type 4's astounding success, could Namco follow it up with another great game, or would they fail to deliver such a masterpiece? Hey, wait a minute. Well, Ridge Racer 5, right out of the gate, has a cool intro, and it's a pretty crazy graphical improvement compared to the previous games, and takes full advantage of what the PlayStation 2 is capable of. Ridge Racer 5 ultimately feels like more of Type 4, though that's exactly what I wanted. Just about everything present in Type 4 remains in 5, though there is one thing that was removed that makes me pretty unhappy. Instead of having a story similar to Type 4, 5 completely abandons the story in favor of being able to make your own team. While 5 is still just as fun as Type 4 and has great graphics, the absence of any story makes winning races feel much less gratifying. It's crazy just how much Shinji's presence in Type 4 gives purpose to coming in first place, whereas the only reward in 5 is the announcer guy saying good job and moving on to the next race. I'm also not sure how much I like the changes made to the drifting mechanics in 5. 
Well, it still feels great. I feel like they dumbed it down a little bit to make it easier for more audiences. You still activate the drifting the same way, but you no longer have to correct the trajectory of your car. The game automatically corrects your car's trajectory the moment you exit a drift, which takes away some of the technique that Type 4 had. Of course, once again, Ridge Racer 5 has a great soundtrack, though I'm not sure if it's quite as good as Type 4's soundtrack. My personal favorite from the soundtrack is Junks. It really saddens me that I have to end this video here. I'll most definitely make a continuation in the second part. Ridge Racer 6 and 7 are games of the 7th console generation, which means that I can't just easily emulate them. Another thing that makes this even harder is that some fucking developers at Namco must have been on some tough shit. Ridge Racer 6 is the only game in the series to specifically be exclusive to the Xbox 360. Then just a year later, Ridge Racer 7 was released as a PS3 exclusive. Ridge Racer 6 also wasn't backwards compatible for the Xbox One, which means I'm gonna have a hell of a time recording footage for Ridge Racer 6. Also, if I ever want to get around to Ridge Racer 7, I'm going to either have to some fucking way get a hold of a reliable ISO of the game and pray to god that 7 is compatible with RPCS3, or I'll have to actually go out and buy a whole PS3 just to play one game. This makes it even sadder because from what I have heard, Ridge Racer 6 and 7 have by far some of the best music out of the series, even blowing 4 out of the water I think. This is especially cool because both games came out around the time that most games were completely ditching techno soundtracks. I mean, just compare this to something like Forza Motorsport which came out in 2005, or Gran Turismo 4 which came out in 2004. Racer 6 and 7 just sound so much more unique and fun. I'll most definitely continue this video on with the part 2 as soon as I'm able to play the last couple of games in the series. I'm gonna leave this video off by saying that the Ridge Racer series has sadly been mostly forgotten. Just about any time you bring up the game series, pretty much all you'll get is people quoting the funny Ridge Racer scene from E3. It's Ridge Racer! Ridge Racer! Remember that one? Alright, so let me, uh, let me go right ahead, get right into the game. Oh, this brings back memories. I don't know if it's just me, but here we go. Whoop. That's pretty much all Ridge Racer is remembered for, being a funny quote from some shitty, embarrassing E3 conference. This is really sad, considering these games have taught me that at one point, racing games are more unique. There was more to racing than just driving around a track and passing other cars. There were incredible soundtracks and cool car designs, interesting stories, fun mechanics, unique arcade controls, etc. If you really think that racing games are just cars driving around a track, then you need to play Ridge Racer Type 4 and come back to me on that. With that being said, have a nice day. Or night.